Hey guys, hope you're well. Today, I want to talk about something that I've been seeing a certain pattern, and I don't know if this is this marks a new era in the music industry. Obviously, there are not a lot of examples happening, but if it happens at least twice, I'm thinking something is going on. But essentially, it's this new era of reinventing deluxe albums, and obviously, the cases that the Examples that I'm going to talk about might not have been the first examples in the music industry of reworking their deluxe album, but I think there might be something new happening for this new era. Let's define what a deluxe or remix album is. So deluxe and remix albums are repackaged versions of original releases, and they often feature addi additional tracks, remixes, alternative versions, or even exclusive content. And these albums serve multiple purposes, such as extending the life cycle of a record or offering fans more content. It might help with streaming, generating sales, and essentially just maintaining the artist relevance in this competitive music market. And from a IP music law perspective, I think it just issues would be more so about like new agreements for royalties or the rights or the clearance rights. That would entail in a album, in a deluxe album, if especially if you're adding new songs onto that album. Before I explain my example, I want to point out this era of TikTok where artists are essentially releasing multiple versions of the same song. So you have the original song, and you might have a instrumental a cappella version, which is not really a cappella. It's more so they take the pro pro produced version of the original song and they just remove the instrumental and that's what they call acapella for me acapella is pentatonix okay like like it's glee okay that's what i'm thinking of not this mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. anyways there's also a sped up version slow down version reverb and essentially it's just to cater to the audience especially for social media you know, it's cost effective because you're not requiring the artist to come back to the studio to rework. Although, um, especially for the acapella version, I'm expecting the artist to come back. Especially if you when you have the budget. Or you hear um, artists, for example, trying to work on their song. And they're, especially if they're like doing it on the piano or on the guitar, I think that could be a good way. Even though it's not like perfect, 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 I think it, it gives more of a personal touch to the song that you're trying to convey. Especially if art, if fans know that this was the original like version of how you wanted, like the first stages before the final, the final produced song. I think they would like it a bit more, not a bit more, a lot more, because it feels more personal. And fans like to, they like, I want to say, they like to be involved at almost every stage of your creativity so yeah if you can provide more insight on that i think that could be really cool i see you as as if i'm talking to Dualipa or i don't know who else but yeah anyway i think the issue with those with this new market of tiktok is the fact that we're diluting essentially creativity because like i said everything is more like digestible and repetitive content i do see for example the the appeal of sped up or slow down version but i think it's my main issue is with the acapella version that just pisses me off <laughs> i don't know why but hopefully i'm not the only one thinking about this anyway so in contrast with those tiktok trends there is this wave of reworking art uh, reworking albums and not i'm not saying a remix of a song you know if a song is popular and you're just doing a remix with a new artist i'm thinking about i'm really talking about the artist looked at their original album and they decided to work rework on their entire album and on top of that add new music that's what i'm talking about and obviously the prominent example is taylor swift although the context behind this was more so for her to gain ownership of her masters or and really maintain her creative control of her songs but that there is that incentive of reworking and I actually, to be honest, I don't really listen to Taylor Swift, but I do like that song. Um, you're losing me. Stop. I like that song. I like that song. 
I also want to talk about another example. It may be more so like with those live performances. The main example I wanted to talk about was Ray doing a concert at in London with the Heritage Orchestra and the Flames Collective Choir. And she, essentially she just performed her recent album, My 21st Century. And she but she made it more so in an orchestral classical music environment and I think that is a really great way to do it although I didn't like I think there's something about really hearing the public in the in the final recording of when you're listening on streaming services that kind of kills the essence and the mood of the song okay yeah it's it's cool to hear like woo, but I think it's also like just growing up doing orchestra where if someone just claps between two movements, you're just like, the the piece was not done yet, you know. Um, but I I do understand that this is more so like a concert. I don't know. Oh, putting my pet peeves aside, that concert was really a way for Ray to showcase her versatility, showcase her vocal range, you know. And the thing is, the album is very honestly like. R&B, pop R&B, and the fact that she could translate that into classical is amazing because not a lot of artists can do that, I want to say, and it's just, I think it's really, really nice. And this example made me think of the this chorus that generated from Pink Panther is saying that she thinks that there's no need to create long songs and everything has to be short. And not long, like not not more than two minutes. The fact that there's no need for a bridge or there's no need for a second verse, and I think I, ha I just have to disagree with that. With because, yes, we are in the in this new era of digestible content. Everything has to be short and sweet and fun. But a two minute song is not going to encapsulate what a certain artist wants to say. What what a certain artist wants to convey through music. The best songs in the 80s, in the 90s, in the in the 2000s, they had a bridge. They had they had a second verse. The bridge is literally the part where the the artist is trying to show the vocal range, like a wah or a bow. You know, it's like that's what you're trying. And I, I think I think it were it's okay if not all artists are able to like have a wide vocal range, but just to say that we don't need is. I have to. I just have to disagree. Well, I'm really talking a lot about this point, but essentially, like the fact that there's this incentive of of reducing the attention span further for uh, for the modern listeners is really going to hinder creativity and innovation for artists. But let's talk about the two albums that really inspired me to do this video, and that really exemplify the concept of reworking. An album. So the first one is Paramore's reprise album This Is Why and Childish Cambino's Ata Vista. To talk about Paramore, they released their album This Is Why and then later that year they did a remix album where they reworked, remixed, rewritten songs from that original album and they also released a demo version of This Is Why. And I think that is so clever to, um, yeah, to essentially, like I was saying at the beginning, the fact that you're putting like a demo version of how it first started, how the how did the idea started, you know, and it, it gives more of a personal taste, a per, like a more personal touch for the artist, and I think that's really really interesting. Okay, so this project represents a significant evolution for the band, for the band for the band, allowing them to reinterpret their work and engage with their audience in a new way, in a more personal way, especially with that demo album, the demo song. And from what I've seen, the album also marks their final release on their current label, which adds more of a historical significance, but also like a personal significance for the band. And then for Childish Gamino's Aita Vista, it was released Wait, this is we're beginning June, so it was released less than a month ago. At uh, by the time at the time I'm filming this, and essentially it's a reissue and a finished version of the original album three fifteen twenty, 
that was released in 2020 and this reworked album includes new guest appearances and refined tracks so when the original album was released it was during the pandemic but also i think um Gemino said that he had recently lost um, a closed one so this album really highlights Gambino's commitment to his craft and he's really showcasing how personal circumstances and the pressure from I don't know like the audience the the music industry other people can really shape an artist's work and also which is really interesting that re-released album is also serving as a prelude to his final album under the Childish Gambino name. Oh my god, I can't wait for this new era. And which adds essentially a more, like it adds that narrative depth to his musical journey. So I think that's really cool. I think both albums really show that, like, I don't know, like you you don't want to just really say I want to be done with it. I think it's like a proper, like they're really reworking, making sure that once like the, the reworked album is it's done like they put everything out and they're moving on i think in the music industry there's this concept of once you release an album it's done like you move on to the next thing but both paramore and childish gamino are really illustrating how you may still release something and still want to work further with that concept especially for with female artists where there's this incentive of always reinvent yourself for each album but I don't think it, it works all the time. I think some people, they want to continue on from that previous album. That's why we have cases or like examples where artists, a couple of years later, they say, you know what, like, I didn't like that song or I felt like I could have done more. But maybe I think it's like also the industry, or like the label pressuring them to move on to the next thing so that they can, I don't know, like maintain that relevancy. I don't know, maybe there, there could be this new wave of reworking and reworking the music and maybe showcasing more by changing the tempo or, or like changing the instruments or maybe even adding new collabs to the songs and essentially showcase how how differently they would have envisioned the song to be presented to the public so i think that's really really nice and it also shows that one song can be like presented in some so many different ways in so many different ways and that could be really interesting to see like maybe you can like one version of the other so that's really nice now obviously not everyone can do this it, it requires time and money and all that stuff but even i think if i'm mainly talking for the bigger artists but i think that could be a really really cool way to reinforce your your image as an artist and if i were to essentially link this nature of we working music from a music law perspective i think it's more so about like maybe securing permission for new arrangements and making sure that all contributors are probably credited compensated i don't know for like negotiating new contracts or maybe seeing the new new like the nuances of the original contracts but again you have Taylor swift it really shows how important it is to gain ownership and gain control of your masters and have the creative freedom to rework a song if you want to right maybe certain album certain labels would not be okay with a an artist reworking uh like an old album i don't know but then again you must have so much time it, it and it takes so much time it takes so much so much effort not from you but also from the producers or, or the musicians obviously that's a thing to consider the biggest lesson i would like to share with you guys is this concept of failure as an end to something and especially with childish gamino he really illustrates how failure is an opportunity for growth and for improvement obviously he was not satisfied with the release the success of the original of the original album and he decided to rework and refine the album to match his artistic vision essentially it, it really does show that you can still make mistakes you can still be dissatisfied with the the end result and make make it a chance not to like gloat but more so to take what was left and essentially recreate and do something better the first person that had in mind was Dua Lipa because 
she released her album Radical Optimism. Obviously, I didn't hate it, but because the press that she was doing around her album, it, it gave she gave this this idea that it was a certain type of album, and then when we had it, it wasn't the same thing. And I think there might have been some changes over the course of her press release, but I think she could have said. Well, and during my first interview, I had said this, but I'm actually going in a different way. So I think that could have been more helpful for the audience to see what they were expecting. Because I, I feel like we've, I won't say catfish, but it was just like, this is not what you said that you were going to do. So it felt a bit sad, but she did say in her interviews that she had written a lot of songs that were potentially like for, al for the album. So I think that could be a great idea for Dua Lipa to essentially not only rework the out the the original songs to fit i don't know like that original idea she had in mind but also add the songs that were that potentially made the album and then like rework them and make sure that i don't know like i think that could be like a great 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 idea for Dua Lipa and not essentially like move on if it if it didn't do well commercially she can just like try to do something with, with the next album but I don't think I don't think she she did say everything on that album. I don't think she did. So she could do something. <laughs> Jolly Pie, if you're listening to me, please work on work on reworking that album, please. I always try to put an IP like intellectual property or music law perspective. But essentially, I think with this idea of of reworking the album, there's really this process of reclaiming or redefining the rights that were associated with the original composition also like ensuring that the the new versions reflect the artist's true intent true intention but then again this is a case this would be a case where the the artist has already so much creative control whereas if it was like i don't know i think i don't know i think both taylor swift and ray i think there's already plenty of videos that explain um, what Ray has gone through but essentially she was not happy with her record deal and apparently there's also Rina Sawayama that's always going that is also going through that similar situation of and I'm also thinking of Tanashi everyone has gone through this I think there's actually funny enough um, I was talking about this in my class today and we were talking about this I, I said to the professor like there might be this new rise of independent artists but then again i don't know <laughs> uh, but yeah there are a lot of artists that are not happy with their current the current contract that are in and they want to essentially have more creative control have more freedom of how they want to inter it, how they want to convey their music where was i going with all this so yes, essentially what I was going to say, from this IP perspective, there might be a clash of rights because yes, you can write the music, but sometimes the labels own the, the, the sound recording, or the, uh, they own other stuff. Sometimes the labels own everything. Yes, you wrote the song, but essentially the money goes to... <laughs> so there's there's a bunch of stuff happening in the music industry. Wow, wow I can't even speak. But essentially don't see failure as okay well this is the end for me i'm never going to release music ever again if you think that there's a chance for you to like like to to give a second chance to to the song that you had already put out you can rework it it's fine and it also like i think it just solidifies how how passionate you are about the the vision that you you thought for yourself and i think it's also a great way for independent of like for new artists um if they feel like they have multiple ways of multiple ideas for a certain song and they really want to showcase that i think that's a great idea but really don't see failure as find it there's always something to look up for but yeah in conclusion i'm really confident about this new era of reinventing album it really does show artistic expression over commercial strategies commercial success and i think that's what we really need especially in this tiktok very um digestible content era like i think it's really much so we are slowly but surely in this new chapter of really valuing creativity and artistic integrity over making so many so much money it really shows how music composition is a continuous uh evolving process so i hope you like the video and i'll see you guys next time bye